What's better than a giant Kindle that you could read all of your books on? A giant 10.2 inch Kindle scribe that has a pen you can use to take notes on. I'm Jason Cipriani and in this ZD Night How To video, I'm gonna walk you through nine tips and tricks to get the most out of the Kindle scribe once you start using it. So the Kindle scribe is nothing more than a giant Kindle at its core, right? It has the Kindle book store on it, Amazon's Kindle book store. You can read your books, you can uh, share your, your family library, like all the stuff you can do on any Kindle device, you can do right here, like here's my library. It's all there, right? It's a normal Kindle. But where it's different is it works with Amazon's basic or premium pins. And that's what I'm gonna focus on today. Kindles have been around forever. How to use Kindles is pretty common. But what about taking notes on a Kindle? It's a little different. So the first thing you'll notice after you boot up the Kindle Scribe and sign in and get it all set up is there's a notebooks tab on the bottom bar that you can select. And that is where you'll go most of the time to access and create new notebooks. Now, at any time, at any of the tabs that are on the screen, there's home, library, notebooks, any of those, at the top of the screen next to the search bar is a new notebooks button. So basically when you tap that to create a new notebook, you're asked then to give the notebook a name. You can choose from, there are currently 18 different templates. Some are planner type templates, some are to-do lists, others have ruled paper, some are dotted. There's a whole bunch of options, right? So you can then name your notebook. You'll have to use the keyboard on the display, hit create, and then you're greeted with a blank piece of paper. Pretty simple. If at any point you decide, I don't really like the way that looks and I wanna change the template I'm using or I wanna rename it, you can tap near the top of the display. You also then have an option to tap on a notebook icon that has a settings gear on it. And here you could rename the notebook, you could choose a different template. And then also the cover is, you have two options. You could use the current page you're currently working on or you can use the first page in the notebook as the cover. So uh, you can apply either of those. If you choose a different template, keep in mind, it doesn't apply to the page you're on or future pages, it applies to everything. So if you start out as a calendar and then you go in and write all your dates and schedules and all that, and then later you switch it to a ruled template, that calendar is gonna disappear and it's gonna look really weird on that piece of paper fake e-ink piece of paper. All right, so when you're in a notebook, if you wanna create more pages, on the bottom left-hand corner, you can see how many pages a notebook has. So right now this says page one of one. If I finish taking notes, fill up this page, and I wanna to go to another page, simply swipe from right to left across the screen with your finger, and page two of two is now visible. Keep going, you could add as many pages as you want. Basically your limit here is storage on the Kindle Scribe itself. When you're using the Kindle Scribe to take notes or sketch or whatever, there is a small circle that has an icon in it. Sometimes it has an arrow in it. Basically what you do is tap on that circle to view a drop-down menu of your toolbar. So there's a pen icon, a highlighter, an eraser, and a finger icon that basically temporarily disables the pen from working on the display and only looks for finger input. There's redo, undo, and then there's an, an advanced menu button as well. Basic, all that does is allows you to move the, te the toolbar from the left side of the screen where it defaults to the right side of the screen. So as far as using the toolbar goes, it's actually really easy. You, it's very intuitive. You tap on the icon of the tool you want to currently use. So if you tap on the pin, the pin will write like a pin. A highlighter, same thing. The eraser, same thing. 
Now there's some nuance here because the basic pin and the premium pin have some di key differences, right? So the premium pin, which is what I have here, has a shortcut button on the side. I don't know if you could see that, but there is a small button there that you can assign tasks or shortcuts to, and I'll go over that here in a minute. But also the tip of the pin doubles as an eraser. So if I was to write and mess up and flip this upside down, I can then erase with that and then flip the pin back over and I'm good to go. However, the basic pin has none of that. It simply is a pin that works on the e-ink display. So as you're going through these different options on the toolbar, for example, switching to the eraser, you actually have to do that if you have a basic pin because you don't have the extra features. There are finer controls you can do within the toolbar for each tool as well, the writing utensil. So for example, if I'm writing with the pin and I wanna change the thickness of the line that comes across on the, on the display, I can tap on the pin icon again and it brings up a menu of multiple options. The same goes for the highlighter option. And then for the eraser option, you can adjust the thickness of the eraser, how aggressive it is, but also there's an erase selection tool in there, which means you can circle something with the pin and it'll erase everything that's within that selection. And then there's an option to erase an entire page. If you've been sketching, you absolutely hate the direction you're going, you can stop it, erase the page, and start all over. So I just mentioned how the premium pin has a shortcut button on the side. You can program exactly what that button does to tailor it and suit it to your needs. So what you'll do on the Kindle Scribe is go, uh, the easiest way is just to wake it up from one of the main screens, whether it's home, library, or notebooks, what you'll do is find the More tab on the bottom, tap on Settings, Pin, and then Pin Shortcuts. And here you'll see a page that has an arrow pointing to the shortcut button, but then it allows you to assign either highlighter, pin, eraser, or sticky note to the pin shortcut button. So let's say if I wanted to assign it to the eraser and so I didn't have to flip it around every time I wanted to erase something. What I would do is write as I normally am with the pin and then if I wanted to erase something real quick, I would just hold in the button and scribble on the screen and it would erase. Once I let go of that button, it reverts back to the last tool that it was active as. So in that case, a pin. It's actually pretty nifty. I've been using it as an eraser just to try it out. Uh, I don't know that it really adds anything. I'm not big on highlighting stuff on an e-ink display. I don't, it's not clicking for me yet, but maybe there's a solid use case out there for other people and highlighter is exactly where you need it to be. I just mentioned that using the shortcut button is possible to add a sticky note. The first time I read this, I thought, huh? And I'm sure that's the exact same response you had as well. So sticky notes can be used in Kindle books, as well as certain documents. So like if you send a Word document to the Kindle scribe and you wanna read it and leave some notes on it, you can use a sticky note there. So when you're in a book, you can't draw on it. You can't write notes across the text. You can't highlight it. The only option you have is to leave a sticky note on the book's page in a specific spot. So when you do that, a little menu pops up that allows you to leave a handwritten note in the exact spot or you can leave a text note using the device's keyboard. So if you have the shortcut button set to sticky note, what you would do is hold it in, tap on the display, the interface would pop up allowing you to leave a note, this is my best favorite part, or whatever, and then you close out that note and it's there, it's kind of just hovering. There's a little sticky note icon next to the area where you tapped. And at the end of reading that book, you can then export all of your sticky notes if you wanna share some thoughts with friends or maybe you're in a book club. All right, so Amazon actually has made it pretty easy to get documents onto the Kindle Scribe. They realize that people are going to want to sign documents, which is possible. They are also going to wanna look at Word documents, highlight, draw, markup, whatever. So there are a couple different options to get documents onto the Kindle Scribe itself. 
You can use your device's specific email address, which is found in the settings on the device itself. You can use your Kindle app on your phone, which now allows you to send documents to your Kindle devices, or you can use Amazon's Kindle web upload tool. So basically it's a website. I'll include a link in the description. You visit this website, you drag and drop documents to a little box, you select all your Kindle devices or just a Kindle device you want the documents to be sent to, you click upload, and a couple minutes later, the documents show up on your Kindle Scribe. It's pretty awesome and it's really, really easy to use. So sticking with that document theme, once you get some documents onto your device, you can open them up and what you can do with the documents really varies and depends based on what kind of document it is. I uploaded some images because those are supported and I could only leave sticky notes on the images. I couldn't actually draw on top of the image or highlight any sections or do anything extra. But I also uploaded some Word documents and the same thing was true. You can't really do a whole lot. Sticky notes is where it's at and that's just not fun. However, with PDFs on the Kindle Scribe, you can do a little bit extra. So I have a PDF loaded here. I can scroll through and you'll notice what you can do and how you will know what you can do in a document is by looking at the toolbar that shows up when you open that document. If you open a Word document or a image, all you see is the finger for touch controls and a sticky note icon means you can only use sticky notes on that document. However, this PDF I have here, I immediately see I have the pen, highlighter, eraser, and then the finger icon for touch controls. Meaning I can write and draw and do whatever I want on this document with no issues. All right, so what happens after you've used your notebooks? You've got a good routine going down. You've been using them in meetings you leave your Kindle scribe behind and you want to use or view your notebook from afar. Thankfully, ahead of schedule, this feature wasn't supposed to come till next year, you can use the Kindle app on your iPhone or Android device to view your notebooks while on the go. Now you can't edit them, you can't make any changes or do anything like that. It is a static document that you could only use as a reference tool at that point but you can easily view your notebooks on the go using the Kindle app, which is kind of nice because now you don't have to bring around this giant Kindle. Let's not beat around the bush here. It's big uh, with you at all times and you can access your notes from anywhere. Hopefully, eventually, you can also leave notes in your notebook from anywhere using those same apps. The last tip for this video is a fairly simple one, but an important one, and that is how to share your notebooks or documents once you're done marking them up, taking notes, sketching, whatever it is you're doing with them. So when you're in a document or a notebook, you tap near the top of the screen and there's a share button at the top. It looks kind of like the share button on iPhone and Android. It's a square with an arrow pointing out of it. You tap on that and then a menu pops up near the bottom of the scribe and has two options. One, it's pre-filled with your Amazon email address, easy peasy. Tap on that, it's immediately sent to your address in PDF form. The other one is share via email. If you select that, you can enter email addresses that you want to send the document to. So when it takes you to the screen to enter an email address, some of your past email address that you've used to send the document to will be, may be there. Uh, you can type in up to four email addresses you want to send the document to, and it also lets you know what file type the document is going to be sent as. Right now, the only thing I can find is PDF. So after you enter the email address, tap send. The recipient is going to receive an email from Amazon Kindle services, basically telling them they have seven days to download a PDF document that you have shared with them. If it's a notebook, it's the entire notebook. If it's a document, it's just that document with any markup, handwriting, whatever it is you've left in it. There's a lot to the Kindle Scribe that I didn't cover in this at all, but these nine tips and tricks I did cover should help you get started and well on your way to taking notes or sketching or whatever it is you're gonna use the Scribe and its mighty pen for as you dive into the future of what looks like will be the Kindle lineup. I'm Jason Cipriani. Thanks for watching this ZDNet video. 
Make sure to check out ZDNet.com for more helpful tips and tricks just like this, as well as all the latest tech news and trends. Thank you.